Hello, everybody, and welcome to the new digital content model. This is a one hour webinar with Randy Lavick. My name is Laura, and I'm one of the community managers over at the Coursera community. This is a free resource for you, a place to connect with others and deepen your learning. The URL for the Coursera community is www.coursera.community. Professor Randy Lavick is an expert in digital marketing and how to use consumer and business big data to define, target, and develop high value markets. He's an instructor at Northwestern University and he helped Northwestern to develop the Coursera online specializations in social media marketing and content strategy for professionals, some of the largest online programs on marketing and content in the world. He's also founder and CEO of consulting company, Marketing Synergy. Welcome, Professor Lavick. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it, Laura. Hello, everybody. Um, what I wanna to do today is to uh, go through and uh, talk about the new digital content model. Uh, a lot of times we think about digital strategy and social strategy, but today things revolve around content. And we're gonna, as I'll show you, Marketing and remarketing is a part of, of getting your digital content out there, but it's really, it's getting the right kind of content and filling up a calendar with really interesting things for your target market that spells success. And so, as you see, the subtitle here is growing market share, creating strong, you know, brand ambassadors, creating strong relationships with people is really what it's all about. And the idea of content means it's content you create, but it's also content you curate. And I'll talk about the roles of the different, uh, those different elements as we go through. Um, before we started, I had two questions. One is what's the best social strategy to be adopted if you're in the banking industry? And I also, there's a, a similar one for uh, services. The key thing that you're gonna see as we go through is a lot of times we get really hung up on our products and our services. And instead, what you want to do is to think about the needs of the target market that you are going after, satisfy their needs. So sometimes it's outside of just talking about how great our, our products and our brands are, although we have to have a mix of that, but it's really getting to that group. The second one was really, really tough. Yeah, not tough, it's something I'm actually, it's the first chapter of my book. It says, do you have a template that you might recommend for a business to consumer destination marketing organization city convention visitor bureaus to reach meeting planners and leisure travelers approximately 125 miles to 375 miles outside of our destination that we could work to fill in appropriate content. And so let me take, uh, I'm gonna give you the uh, uh, one minute of that because it really is something that's interesting. When I work with entrepreneurs, one of the things I find is that they are, they are totally ignorant to the fact that there are really great big data systems that are free that can target not only the United States, but the world. And what we're gonna do on this one, we'll talk just about the United States. But to answer that question, what I would do is I'd go to a, a site called InfoUSA. These, are, these companies compile all of the businesses in the United States and all the people that work in them and all the consumers in the United States and, and, and their household characteristics. And what you can do is you can go out here for free, click on business list to do the business side, although the consumer list, you can do that as well. It brings you to this page. If you look on the right-hand side, it says there, uh, it shows there are nine, 9 million plus businesses in the country. And so what this is, is an actual um, database that when you get to the end to your target market, you can actually order email lists or order tele telephone lists, pay for it with your credit card and deliver it. So the first thing it asks you is to type a business. For geography, you can go in and you can look for an MSA, which is a marketing area, or you can do a radii. I want it 375 miles around this address, like around the campus at Northwestern. Then over on the other selections, I can actually pick out the title. In the middle, I can do size of business. And every time I put in criteria, it records it on the selected criteria on the, on the right-hand side and the counts go down. So you get to the review criteria part, you can actually order this list and send them an email for your target market and the title would be the group you wanna to go to. 
because I'm going through it really fast, out on my website, which I'll give you here in a second, are also on YouTube. I have videos on how to find the SIC and NICS code for your industry that you're targeting, as well as how to target businesses with InfoUSA. And then I also have one for how to target consumer markets with InfoUSA. I use these in my class, um, and you might find them very valuable. They just take you through step by step by step how to go through it up to the point of ordering. But I want my students to quantify markets and figure out the value before we start targeting them. So it's a way of gathering insights. So that answers a question. I also have these videos linked up on my website, which I'll show you to make it all work. So let's get into digital content strategy. Um, one of the things, I read all the new books and there's all these new books that are saying things like, well, the sales funnel is dead. And you know, the new thing is helping, it's not, it, you know, it's not selling and you can't push your product. And I don't think that's true. Um, what I really wanna do is to show you a digital content strategy that blends sales and marketing with digital content that allows you to build uh, you know, five major areas of your business. So what we're gonna focus on first off is how do I grow market share? What should I do in terms of the digital content that will attract prospects to me, put them onto a database if I use a strategy like nurture marketing, and then builds my company going forward. The second thing is how do I build strong relationships with my customers and my prospects? And so what are the steps we're gonna go through to keep them engaged with us and build a strong relationship through engagement? Next, I wanna generate positive ratings and reviews. One of the things that's important today is to keep in mind that more people are influenced by ratings and reviews than by any of your brand content. They don't trust brand content. But if it's re recommended in a blog, if it's recommended on a ratings and review system, it, it uh, tends to carry a lot of weight. So we ought to build that into our strategy and I'll show you where. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna position your brand and your brand essence. In other words, it's more, the marketing is about positioning my brand relative to my competition. And so we've got to have that as a part of our mix. And finally, how to engage your high value markets. In other words, how do I put out things that is digital content that will really excite them and will bring them in? So what we're going to do is we're going to focus around these five goals and build a comprehensive content strategy in today's webinar. So here are the keys to success. You know, one of the things we do is we, we grow our profits by providing value. So value is gonna be at the base, but it's not your value. It's the value of your target market. And so we're, we're gonna think about how to, to uh, identify that. And so what we're gonna do is we'll analyze communities to develop insights. And what I wanna know is what are the things that are on their plate? What are they going through? And how can I help them as well as then blend in my sales and marketing collateral. And one of the things that I have, I have a number of mantras in my class that I really like to use in my books too. I love rhythm builds revenue. In other words, the key is when we're talking about digital, you don't, what I'm gonna show you is how to build a 365 day, 52 week plan, because you've gotta be out there all the time. It doesn't have to be your content, but it could be curated content. It could be marketing of past content or new content. It could be remarketing them. But the key is you wanna keep a pulse going to keep, your, uh, to keep growing your business. And so one of the things I want you to remember are the two most powerful words in digital, all right? If you were in my class, this would be on the test. And the two most powerful words are powered by. In other words, I don't have to create a content, and I could run a webinar, here you see uh, one of our sports. In the background, I have the, you can put up the name of your company. Uh, you can write a blog that's, uh, you know, interviewing somebody, but is powered by your company. So think about powered by, in fact, if you go out to like uh, CMO.com, which is a great community for CMOs, you'll see it's powered by Adobe. And so again, we wanna help power our communities by helping them with a blend of curated and created content. So we'll talk that as we go through. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm a big one for systematic methodologies. We're gonna go through these uh, 10 steps. We're first gonna gain insights. We'll find influencers and communities, which we did 
in the last uh, webinar, so I'll just touch upon them. Then the strategy starts with be with them. And I'll explain to you what that means. Celebrate with them, them being the target market you want to develop. Inspire them awesomely. Educate them. Ramp up the excitement. Maintain the buzz. Create an exceptional experience. And then ask for reviews and ratings. And what we'll do is we'll go through each one of those a step at a time as we go through it. Then the last thing, and I'm going to keep emphasizing it, is you need to market and remarket like crazy. Just because you put out or create content or you curate content, nobody knows about it. So just like we did for these webinars, periodically we went out and kept reminding the marketplace about the webinars. We used different hashtags. We used uh, different ad handles for different people to get people involved and to go to different communities. The key is you need to market like crazy as you're moving forward. And so one of the things we're gonna do is I wanna show you how to build a 52 week calendar. And if you go to my website, which is www.msinetwork.com backslash prosper, there is a free digital content template that you can download, it's Excel. And what you can do is you can actually go through systematically through the 10 steps and build a 52 week plan for any consumer market you wanna target, and any business market you want to target. And so feel free to use that. Also on that msinetwork.com backslash prosper, I have those videos that I showed you earlier on uh, how to target a market. So here's the first step. One of the things we need to do is to understand the desires of your high value markets. And so one of the things that, and we've, we've done it, I gave you some tools in the last one, but if you think about it, this is kind of my target market is marketers, and they're concerned with all these different topics. And the key is they would like help in being better professionals as CMOs in all of these target areas. And so when I think about it, it's way outside of just what I offer, but it's these are the things that people really want. And so what you wanna do is they're on a journey. They're trying to gather information on all of these topics. And so you want to ask yourself, what are the major themes they're exploring? You know, what are the hot topics that they want to learn about? And then basically you can interview them and, and, and to get a better read as to who they are. And then you want to follow really great con influencers in these areas and curate the areas you don't have expertise in. In other words, people are looking for it, so let's give it to them. And so I gave you some tools that you can use in our last webinar. You can just watch that. But basically, understand all that they need. Like in the area of financial services, yeah, I want to hear about banking and what you could do for me with retirement. I'd also just like to hear about retirement. I'd like to hear different topic areas. So some of them you can bring to me directly because you have expertise. More of them you'll need to curate. So the next step, is identify what you know is your expertise, and then look at the community and see where the overlap is and where there's unique areas. The unique areas, again, we wanna go out and find it. So we use social, uh, we'll go out and look for forums and bulletin boards where people are talking in communities. We'll follow some of the, the key players. And so your strategy should be, I am going to create or filter, doing like a filter and focus blog, on content that I know about. And I'm gonna show them my expertise. I'm not, it's, it's gonna be informational, powered by my company, that is going to then get people happy. And they'll get to know me, they'll get to p understand my brand and my position. And then we can talk as we go forward when they're ready about doing business. The other side is I wanna do influencer curated content. In other words, I want my company to be the portal of great information that is going out to my high value market. And I can find people in my marketing area that are experts on genetic algorithms and privacy and budgeting and building a business and how does this all work? I can make this all happen. And then there are other areas where I have expertise. I may still interview uh, you know, a, uh, a thought leader in an area. Um, I can do a lot of things to keep involved in this but the key is I'm gonna to go to the outside to find the influencers I need. That's curated content. That's why I don't think it's overrated. It's just misused. 
And then the, the key is understand your area of expertise that you can uh, go after them. So how do we do that? So um, going back, the very first step that I want you to do is I want you to think of a 52 week calendar. And I want you to think of what are the events that are important to your target market. Okay, so it could be going to social media week. Um, IBM Watson puts on a lot of great things in the area of AI. It could be going, you know, one of my clients has health water. So it was, they wanted to be at Marathon. So there's a Boston Marathon. Whether there's IoT World Congress, you know, if you have people, if your products are into the home or the people that you're targeting are into home and, and garden, there are places there. The first step I have my students do, and I'd recommend you do, is go out and find the events that are gonna be important to your target market and earmark those weeks with, for that particular uh, event. Because your market's gonna to stop to go there, you need to think about doing that there as well. So when you go through community events, there's a couple of things that you need to know. One of the things that's really great is most major events now have hashtags. If it has hashtags, that attracts an audience. Therefore, I can do marketing around that event prior to the event, during the event, and after the event very effectively. In fact, one of the things that my students really love is I have them write a filter and focus blog around a particular event and you know, talk, ideally get an article from one of the speakers in the event, and they write a real positive blog about what they're learning. They then post that out and market it out with the hashtag of the event. And I can't tell you how many students have actually been contacted by people saying, wow, this is a great blog. Where are you coming to the event? I'd like to meet up with you. And then of course they have to tell them that they are uh, you know, an undergraduate at Northwestern. But the key is it really gets to the market. You can also then be involved in the event. And after the event, you could do post interviews and things, we'll talk about that. But block off these key events that are attracting your market. And then you basically have a couple options that you can do. The real dumb one is you can ignore it. You know, I mean, if you just ignore it, it'll go past you, but you have a great chance to get involved with the event whether or not you're going. The second thing is you can virtually participate. In other words, you could put out blogs and other sorts of things prior to the event. You could talk during the event. You could do interviews post-event, even though you're not there physically. Um, third thing you could do is attend. And so you can just be a part of the event and, and participate. The final thing you could really do is be the center of it. In other words, you could actually uh, sponsor a, uh, you know, somebody who's doing a, a, a promotion or you could sponsor um, a, a webinar or a group or panel. And so you basically can choose your level of activity, but don't ignore it, all right? The second step is to celebrate with them. We all have, this is really low hanging fruit, but it works so great. We all have things that our target market celebrate, uh, holidays. And so what I would encourage you to do is to go out and find the holidays people like. I mean, Pi Day, I get, can't tell you how many comments I get by just saying, hey, happy Pi Day, or happy Chinese New Year, happy social media day. I'm into wine, so having a glass of wine on national holiday makes sense. The key is have some fun with your markets and they will appreciate you understanding and giving out um, some uh, you know, kudos during the holidays. And one of the things that I do is that if it's a major holidays, like in, in the United States, it's like Thanksgiving or the Christmas holidays, I actually plan, I block out the week and we put in a lot of things. We may, uh, if it's a uh, Memorial Day, I may do a tribute to veterans. I may do things that will resonate with my target market that is also helps position my business. And so go out and celebrate with them. At the bottom, I've given you weird holidays. There's holidays for everything you offer and everything that's of interest to your target market. So feel free to go out and celebrate with them. And put that into your calendar. So the next thing is, how do I inspire them? How do I grow market share? And basically market share is grown by doing what are called hero content. This is a term that was developed um, by uh, YouTube and Google. So if you go out and look at hero hub and help, 
uh, that they, they have a lot of videos out there on it. But it's something that's unexpected and exceptional for your company. In other words, what you want to do is to become awesome in the eye of your target market. And to do that, you want to do something that will be highly valuable to them. It may not be in your expertise area, but it'll be in their interest area. So if you look around the pictures here, starting in the upper left, that is a uh, Red Bull who's great at doing this, where the gentleman jumped out of the, uh, uh, out of the uh, balloon up in the atmosphere and parachuted to the earth and there was Red Bull all over. It was capturing the spirit and the essence of the company. Uh, if you look to the one on the right, uh, Orbit Media, Andy Crescidina is somebody I follow. He's a really great influencer. He has these wine and web webinars. They're streamed live. In the background, it says, you know, uh, Orbit Media, but it's powered by Orbit Media, but it's on any topic that will be of interest to you as a web marketer. So people go to a physical location and they have wine and they have a good time, but it's also streamed live. And if you, you can go in with the hashtag and ask them a question, even though you're not there. Uh, local, we have a couple local restaurants that their awesome thing is kind of a version of Chopped. And what they do is they give either a series of, uh, you know, all their chefs or they give some of their best clients that are into cooking a basket of things and see who comes up with the best um, recipe. And the fun about it is, is that it gets everybody participating. You can do it physically and you can then also do it vir virtually by streaming to get to your group. Uh, the webinars are really good, uh, like this one. Uh, also, you can do uh, podcasts of key topics. But what you want to look for is something that is exceptional. And so, as a rule, you'll do two to four of these a year. This is where you're going to grow your market share by positioning your company. And so, think outside the box. This is something that would be really fun for the target market to do that also positions your company. And so you can mark it, but you have to be subtle about it. You're really focused on that bigger circle of here are the things they want to hear about. For example, one of my uh, uh, clients does power supplies. They have a, a secret um, um, a quarterly webinar with CEOs of major companies, non-competitors, but major, major companies. And what they do is they go to these CEOs and they say, what do you want to hear about? And whether it's Obamacare or what's happening in the government or what's legislation's going on or anything, and none of them are about green energy or energy, they're happy to bring in the very top people to consult with these people, with these CEOs, because then when it comes around to um, actually doing business, they're on the inside track. They have a huge impact on the CEOs and the C-suite which then plays into their stuff. So think about how do you inspire your markets two to four times a year with something that would really excite them. It could be different each time, but it's something that would really inspire them. The second thing, the next major step is I want you to think about how to educate them. One of the hardest parts of building a 52 week calendar is finding something every week, but it's actually easy. If you think about the key areas that they're interested in, and the themes that they're looking for, and then just rotate them. In other words, every quarter go through five to 10, and I just dedicate a week to each theme. And with that week, we can put out and curate content. We can find good content and drop it into a content library and use it. We can do blogs or videos or podcasts. And so what you wanna do is to figure out what is it that's interesting to your market, and then what can you do every week to put out something in an area that's a topic of interest to them. And again, you don't have to create it, you can curate it, but it's just keeping things going. If you, if you follow me on, uh, on, on my LinkedIn site or on Twitter, you see I'm constantly bringing out information from the very best and saying, here's something you ought to read, here's something you ought to watch, here's something you ought to do. And that's because I know the rotation of themes that's important to my target market. And I just make sure I go through them every quarter to go out and give them something that they like. I can create it or I can also curate it. The next thing you want to do is ramp up the excitement. And let me take you through that a little bit. Let's say that I wanted to, um, I'm going to publish an ebook on marketing in China. Well, a couple of months earlier, 
I might tip off the influencers that I'm going to publish this book. I might offer to do webinars where I'm interviewing the authors of the book, talking about it. I could do nurture marketing to have people, you know, sign up to get the book early. Um, I might even make it a contest with my influencers to do it. Um, I could do a press release, certainly to tell everybody about the book. I could do podcasts with the key authors about some of the findings of the book. I could ask 10 questions on China for, you know, in a small video that I put out. And I could do email blasts and traditional marketing to get people excited about reading my ebook. That my ebook will be my hero content for this month. I may sign them up for a landing page. I could talk about this for weeks. And then what I want to do is talk about it and market it out on Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram just to get people excited about the release of my ebook that is going to be happening in August. And so this is what's called ramping up. Uh, for a hero event. The hero event, the things you're doing that's exceptional, is a big part of your budget. So you don't want it to fail. So you ramp it up. You talk about it all the time. You bring in people. You get the influencers involved to maximize impact. So you actually build that into your calendar as the ramp up events coming up for the particular hero event that you're, you're investing in. On the other side of it, you do the same thing. Once I've introduced the ebook, I could ask influencers to give us reviews and ratings. I could go out and do a press release. I could go out and do a post release interviews with some of the key influencers about what did they think of the book, why did they like it. I could create an audio book. I could go out and do social or traditional advertising to promote it. Um, I can still do banner ads and paid ads and Facebook ads and so forth and e email blasts to let people know. I can blog on it or podcast on it or do a video log. And then I can talk about that. I can use that information, these events, to have points where I can go out and talk about this a lot. And so what it does is it makes sure that, you know, people understand that I have this hero event and I want to maintain the buzz for as long as I can. So think about a hero event as something that's awesome that you're investing in. Then you have the ramp ups. You have the maintain it, and that becomes a huge part of your calendar. Professor Lavick? Yes. I just wanted to share a question with you that came in about hero sure. content. Yeah. So Kelly has asked, uh, can you share where I can learn more about uh, hero content ideas? Yeah, I, the, the thing I would do is this. Um, go out, start with YouTube. And original words that, that, that uh, YouTube used was hero hub and hygiene. And you can actually see the launch of that back in 2016. Then just go out and there are a number of people that publish as well as there's some good videos on hero hub and help. And, help, and so basically heroes of major things. The hub are those themes that we're rolling through and help is the very next thing we're going to look at. And so the, those are probably the best places to look. And if you go out, there are best of examples of Hero Hub and Help. And I found them in India, in China, in Germany, in the United States, in Canada, in Brazil. There's all sorts of people that are showing Hero Hub and Help because more and more advertising agencies are adapting it because it works so well. Good question. The next, the next step, uh, this is the help part, is help them become exceptional. Uh, one of, I won't show the video just due to, to time, but one of the things I, I, I use this audio, uh, audio Technica mic here, it's a 2020 mic, it's great. And, but if I wanted to learn how to install it and how best to use it, they don't really supply a lot. They give me a manual that I can read through, but when I'm installing stuff, I don't want a manual. And so one of the things that, that um, happens is people shoot unboxing videos. And so I have one down here really, that you can watch at your leisure. But it, it, you know, you think about how much money they spent to build this mic. And then basically the, uh, the, the unboxing is just the guy like, hey dudes, here's what we're gonna do. And it's, it's just really, it's unprofessional, but they get it done. The thing I'm trying to, to emphasize is this, 
your markets want help to use your products and services best. And if you want to position your company, spending some time on help is a huge way of impacting. You can do how-to videos. You can give them, you know, tweets of the week and ideas of the week. You could, um, you know, do tips and tricks. How-to podcasts are really useful. And so what I want you to do is to think about how you want to impact your market. They spent money on your products and services. To abandon them just doesn't make sense anymore. And think multimedia. When I'm installing my microphone, I'm going to be on the floor. So a video makes sense, an audio makes sense, a book, no. You know, so you need to think it through. So here's some tips for you. First, I've developed con help content every time you launch or upgrade your product. Explain it to me. Make it easy for me to consume your information. Second, this is a really good tip. Visit customer service and ask them what are the common problems you have or you're receiving from people and then produce an answer video. You can do it really cheaply and put it out there and let people know what to do. Talk to your customers about what they see. You know, considering developing tools to help build a relationship with them. You know, and don't forget podcast is a great way to do it. Um, there's a question of what are the best uh, contexts to use podcast versus video? Well, the thing about it is if I don't need to look at something, using a podcast makes sense to give me the steps. The nice part with both podcasting and videos is I can go forward, backward, forward, backwards until I understand what to do whether you're giving me a tip or you're showing me how to do an install. So I would do both. Oftentimes with my students, I have them shoot a video, then I just take the recording out and that becomes a podcast. So any way that you wanna do it works. The key is think about your target market and how they like, how they like to consume it. Next, go and give them an ability to rate your company. Now, one of the things that we found that, uh, if you see on the right from uh, studies we've done at Medill uh, in the uh, Spiegel Research Center, people are really suspicious if everything's a five-star ranking. So don't be afraid that you're gonna have some negative ones, but if you do, follow up with the people, solve it, and then ask them to do a re-ranking of you. But it's a great way to get people excited because they are going to see it and share it with each other. And so more and more consumers, as you see on the left, really trust online reviews more than they trust your, your um, materials. So do help to get them really satisfied. Then when they're satisfied, have them give you a rating and a review and use that to build your market share. It's a way of letting your audience help you because they're satisfied with you. Then what I want you to do is think about marketing like crazy. In other words, if you're creating these, all this content, you need to go out and if we've created content, we now need to go out and market it, not just once, but over and over using different hashtags and things we talked about last uh, webinar to really get people excited. Your markets are huge. That's why I started with you know, getting the size of it. If you think your markets are millions of people, one or two tweets and one or two, uh, you know, postings on LinkedIn is not going to make it. You need to do a lot of marketing. You need to keep reminding people it's out there. Don't do it every day, but do it periodically over the course of a few weeks to make it work. Then you have your curated content that's coming out and you're doing it with your, uh, um, your hub and help sort of, uh, of information. And so what you want to do is accelerate it. Use hashtags. And don't just say, here's a, just don't retweet it. Go out and make a tweet with comment and say, here's something that's really great. Then take it over to your LinkedIn page and take it over to Instagram. Let people know about great content that's in their area of interest without, you know, being too pushy about it. When you find curated content that you know is good and you don't need to use it right away, put it in a curated content library by topic area and use it when you're ready. Then market it again. In other words, one of the things I like I did in the next video or the next webinar we're going to do is actually on trends for 2019. Well, I marketed that in December. I marketed it in January. I marketed it in February. I'm going to market it again this month. And then if they end halfway through, I'm going to have a review of it to see if I'm on track or not. 
And so I can market it dozens and dozens and dozens of times, not getting the market tired of it, but actually getting them kind of excited about it. And then if it's something that's older, just delete it and move on to other content. In other words, we're always looking for the very best of the best, the most relevant and timely content that we can. One of the things people ask me a lot is, well, I'm a startup. I don't have time or the resources to create a lot of content. My answer to you is this. Use curated content as the bulk of what you're putting out there. Think about being out there every week or every other week to make it work. Then create content that will position your brand and that will be effective. One of the things I love is why not just do an, a, some sort of an interview with someone. You can record it very cheaply through Skype and other tools. You can stream it live and have a webinar that you advertise that it's going to be happening. You do the interview with the individual and live. You take a hashtag and you let people send in questions. You record it. Now you've got recorded content and live content and so forth. In other words, use the different tools that are cheap and available to do creative content that you can do, but then don't sweat the other stuff. You know, have fun. Go ahead and curate out content that you'll find interesting. Sorry about that. So here's some mantras that, uh, oh, one last thing. One of the things I like to do uh, is, is actually from Andy Chris and Dina, it was a three minute rule. The way I find curated content is I follow a lot of great influencers, then over breakfast and then at lunch and then maybe in the evening, I'll just go out for three or four minutes. I'll read a couple things. If I find great stuff, I either put it to the curated content library or I send it out with a quote or I take it over to some of my uh, the, you know, different sites to get information out. So what you wanna do is you know, think about how everything flows. Take a few minutes out of your day to do that. If you follow the right people, like we talked about in the last uh, webinar, you'll have a great soup of information coming in. Pick the best of the best and take it out to your market. So here's uh, kind of the mantras I have in my class. The first is give to get. If you want to become an influencer, you want to be able to have a lot of followers, give the market what they want. Curate content, create content, and get out there. Next one is filter and focus. I'm inundated by stuff. Give me the stuff I need. Next, rhythm builds revenue. The key is not to do three blogs and quit for the rest of your life. It's to keep going and don't try to do too much but don't get, you know, don't be, uh, you know, too infrequently out there. But the key is, yeah, curate and create content, but also market and remarket it over and over just to keep me in the loop so I can figure it out. Also, you know, use, um, you know, I use Buffer to schedule different tweets to all of my social media. That's a free tool. The nice part about it is you can then set it up so I'm firing off tweets in the middle of the night, which has a huge impact in Asia, um, and it won't be seen if I do it during the day. Think multimedia engagement. You know, right now, we all want to consume media in the way we want to consume it. So think about doing podcasts. Think about doing videos. And they're not that hard to do. And, you know, and, or at least go and curate those sort of, of media because people are consuming it where they want to consume it. Think about communities and influencers. Go out and do a search for communities by just putting the topic and then putting the word forum or bulletin board afterwards, and you'll find communities. Also go out on Facebook and look, there's a lot of them there. Finally, ride the wave. Right now, social is always evolving. All these things are evolving. So I keep in touch with the thought leaders in my area for information on everything from vlogging to blogging to podcasting because they know it first. And so anything that my clients want, anything that my target markets want, I will go out and find the influencers, have them help me learn, and then through give to get, I'll give them kudos and I'll promote them through my social assets because in return, that'll give me credibility, it'll gain me followers because I'm filtering and focusing Plus, it'll give them followers, too. So everybody wins here. It's not a case of the pie gets chopped up. The pie just gets bigger. And people are looking for help. So give it to them. Um, 
you know, here is another question and I'm putting on an international colloquium for it. How do I best mix social? One of the things that's really important here is that we don't have to physically go to things anymore. I mean, look at the, look at the, the breadth of this webinar and we're doing it all, all uh, you know, uh, virtually. So what would, what's wrong with getting a big screen TV, uh, you know, and, uh, and then putting on two or three speakers and having it all run independently if you can't get people and you don't have the budget to get them to their place. They want the information. They're not looking to necessarily be physically there. And so I, I have no trouble with this. I work on um, social media week all the time. And we did one where we had the mayor of Chicago with mayors from people all over the world talking about how social is impacting government. Nobody was in one location and it works great. You know, so think about how to do that. So anyway, I'm done. Uh, we're on time and I'm open for any questions you would like to ask. Great. So uh, there are quite a few questions, uh, Professor Lavik, sure. and if you'd like to uh, take a look at the questions that have been asked in the Q&A feature, okay. yeah, uh, I'll go through them. you can then decide, you know, how to uh, answer yeah. those. And then I've also kept track of some others that were asked in the chat box. Okay. So here's, here's what I, let me take you through what I've got. What is the best social marketing strategy for electronic payment industry? Again, think about your target market. Don't think about the electronic payment industry. What I tell my clients is that no one cares about you. You know, the last thing I want to hear is a diatribe about why your electronic payment system is better than everybody else. But as a CEO, electronic payment is part of my mix. Get the rest of my mix and then help me there. Uh, the web page for the digital context template my site is MSI Network for Marketing Synergy Incorporated Network.com backslash uh, prosper and everything is there. Are FAQs no longer useful? No, they're huge. One of the things that uh, we'll talk about in the next uh, webinar is the concept of P0. You know, we used to wanted to get to position one in organic search and search and pay per click, but now all of that stuff is going electronically we are now the new screen is now our smartphone so frequently asked questions can be tailored to get you into p0 so that when i ask a question of what's the best uh, sushi restaurant that's near me it'll pop up your information so faqs are there but if i have to read it that's a problem if it's something i could consume with uh, audio or video so i would suggest you do both I just read that hashtags are not really functioning to build leads. Yeah, not true. The key is it identifies a market and people who are searching for an answer. And if you come up as the answer, that's great. If it works to leads, great. But the key is, yeah, if you go out and all your answers are, gee, I'm the best in the world, you ought to be my lead, they're not gonna do it. Um, customers find too much of remarketing is spamming, yes. If you're, if you're giving me a target information that I'm totally disinterested in because it's not in my bounded area, it's spam. And so, you know, people who call and who give things that are untailored, it, it, it really does irritate them. But if you show them you have knowledge of their needs in terms of I'm here to help you and you help them along, it's not spam. They'll just overlook it if it's not relevant to them right now. Uh, you make a great distinction of how B2B and B2Cs are in content marketing. What about terms of content mix, curated versus created? The key thing I think about in B2B is they have a, the target markets you're going for have a lot on their plate. So give them a lot of good curated stuff in the topic areas you're not expert in. And then think about creating it or at least filtering it uh, through and building it out in your areas of expertise. Uh, do we have, um, let's see, uh, do we have to perform a periodic cleanup of our followers? I don't. I just find that they attrite off on their own, um, you know, but, and even if you move to a new target market, if you're giving, if I'm in target market A and then I move to target market B, abandoning A, 
the people in A will leave over time when they see you're not talking about them. So I'm not too worried about that. Are ClickFunnels a good way to bring awareness to products? Yeah, I use funnels for everything to pull it together. It wasn't a good topic for here, but um, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a good area. Uh, is there a performance or software that could tell me more information about who is currently following me? Yeah, there's great ones for, Twitter has their own uh, system, as does Facebook. Uh, there's ones for Instagram. Um, I like, you can go through, there's a number of analysis tools. Just do a search on it to do it. I've observed that I lose followers if I post uh, content too often. Yeah, you know, the key is you want to be, you want to do different things. In other words, I can do it every day for a period of time, but then I better bury the message a lot. I noticed a lot of people use the same message overall. The other thing, and I just got done talking to uh, one of my followers online about this, is that another thing people do is they don't use a scheduler like Buffer. And so they will post out articles from other people, but they'll do them bang, 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 bang. And suddenly you have 10 things on your Twitter site or 10 things on your LinkedIn site. It's like, hey, pick the best and give me one a day or maybe do one in the day and then one in the late evening. So you're not overwhelming my site and you're being sensitive to me and you're getting your information out. Uh, what do you think of auto likes and auto followers on Twitter and Instagram? You know, it's just a part of the world. Um, I don't get too stressed out about it, um, you know, but the key is, yeah, there's robo this and all that good stuff. But the, if, you're, if you're talking to people honestly, and you're talking to them in a way that interests them, uh, this becomes really not a huge problem as we move forward. Uh, I often have to call to action in my posts. Um, I just read that uh, Facebook gives less, yeah, um, to a degree it's true about the outgoing links, but um, you know, the thing is uh, it's okay to have call to actions. I use those all the time. It's just don't get too salesy um, look, think of the balance to make everything work. Um, other questions, uh, Laura? Yes, I do have a few other questions here. Uh, has content curation become a buzzword? Yeah, no, it, it has. It's, a, it's, it's something that we, know we don't think about because we get real so focused on what we're doing. But to me, curation's where it's at. I can go find experts on anything my clients or my target market wants to hear about. And I can figure out the best of the best. And so I use that. Um, I have a lot of speakers in my class. I got all of them on social and I just say, I go out on Twitter and on LinkedIn, I'd say, who is the best at talking about AI? And people will come back and say, and eventually I'll have consensus and I'll follow them. And if they're great, that's great. You can do that with any topic anywhere in the world. Okay, and uh, there's a question asking how to deal with the decline in organic reach. So I'm not okay. sure if that's specific to Facebook or general. Yeah, it's actually general. And what's happening here is we're in a transition. Uh, everything is changing. And in the past, what I, you know, well, we used to be in a, in a world where I'd look up stuff and I'd, I'd use it on my computer and it'd give me back a bunch of pages of things. Then we, then we evolved to pay-per-click, which was I wanted to just, um, you know, show, advertise to me things that will work and I'll click through. Now people are doing it on their smartphone and, they're, and that's where the P0 concept comes in. So to a degree, you want to be organic, but you really want to be on social assets giving out really valuable information that's better than any search that you can do but you do have to you understand we're now transitioning from computers to tablets to smartphones or to cell phones and then the smartphones and that's going to change the way that we uh, consume content and how we find things more and more I'm, I'm telling my clients get into p0 audio because what you want to be is the answer to the question. You know, who makes the best electronic car? I just want to hear the answer, particularly if I'm out walking or driving. And so audio is going to be the way of the future. Okay, and another question here is, 
is there a best practice ratio for how much time you spend on social media marketing compared to traditional marketing? Well, think of, think of social as your delivery vehicle, your media. And so um, what you're going to do is to use that to, you know, power by, give, give me power by answers and be a part of it. Certainly you want to have a sales and marketing function there, but look at the ramp up and the follow up. That's where you put in pay-per-click. That's where you put in traditional advertising. That's where you do Facebook ads. What you're trying to do is power people up to come to or participate or be a part of a really big adventure doing to get them excited about it. They want awesome. So give them awesome. And awesome is something that your competitors won't do. It's something that you makes you unique. And it is something that's highly sensitive to what they're looking for. Give them that and you've got a success. Okay, and uh, another question here. How can you leverage LinkedIn to promote a startup uh, SaaS application? Ah, one of the things that um, I, I, I work in, in what's called the garage at Northwestern. And in the garage, we have startup groups and they are characterized by a lot of enthusiasm and zero dollars. So if you're going to leverage, if you have a SaaS application, what I would do is I'd start with the target market. I would begin to curate content out there. One of the things I'd use is nurture marketing, um, which is basically I would say, rather than just giving them a webinar, let's say, put the webinar behind a registration wall so you can build a database of prospects who want to see it, then do a, a you know, fantastic uh, webinar on a topic of interest to your target market. It may not be your SAAS application, but you power the, the uh, webinar that way. And the same thing's true is that I would find things that are going to be of interest to my target market. Then I would mix in a little bit about what I knew and my application, but I wouldn't pound people with them. I just help them to move forward. Other questions? Whoops. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be on the test. <laughs> there, it looks like there are two additional questions in the Q and A uh, box. Yeah. Um, if you want okay. to take a look there. Yeah. Uh, there, the last one is: Can you share, uh, you know, who who uh, you follow for social media? Andy Cristadina. Uh, if you want to do infographics, it's Randy Crum K R U M. Um, I follow Eric Qualman. Uh, equal man is what he's called. Um, I call, I, I follow Amy Landenau uh, for vlogs and she has a great vlog channel. Um, I follow IBM for AI and others. Um, you know, I also, uh, if you just watch my site, you'll see that there's AI people, there's people that are talking about programmatic marketing, genetic algorithms. All of those are people that I follow because I find them valuable. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm a content curator, but not good at being social and social networks. Yeah, that's, you know, that's okay. Um, are there professionals out there? Yeah, there are companies that can do it. But the key is I've given you tools to find out the hashtags people use, uh, find the influencers. And so the key is you don't have to be profound. You just have to be there. And so I would build a, a, uh, I would build an influencer base and you could then put out the stuff that you find. You can also hire companies that will do it. Um, so that one was, where can I see the videos um, for cutting edge? Well, first off on YouTube, I have uh, a rather extensive uh, um, channel that is devoted to, you know, how to become good at social. And I use them for my class as well as for just to put them out there. And so, you know, I would, I would do that. Um, that's, and I just try to keep up with new tools and things that come on the market. Also the uh, Coursera courses, I change those every month to keep things up to date. And so we're constantly putting out good things. Um, you know, the key is, I know it doesn't take a lot, you know, you don't have a lot of time, but your markets are talking whether you're there or not. So be a part of the conversation, be a part of what they're doing 
and help them to find out the information they want to really make it make it uh, an experience for both of you. You know, social is just something we do. It's our way of connecting up. So we want to make sure we do it. Any other questions? I don't see any other questions right now. So uh, thank you, Professor Lavik, very much for your time today. Thank you so much. And thank thanks you. to Coursera. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all for attending and we'll see you next time.